Listen, I don't want to alienate my core support, but I am going to continue to create a safe space for the repentant, a, a safe space for, well, compassion for the con. Remember, co co contempt for the con men, compassion for the con. And I don't know whether you remember, but I gave up some time ago uh, on expecting the arguments to prevail. I, I, when I say I gave up, I never stopped making the arguments, but I realised some time ago that the arguments were never going to prevail. I think the point that I realised that was when believe in Brexit, believe more, became a mantra uh, from people who were in positions of power. Just pause and think about that milestone in the decline of British public intelligence, where, when you effectively had a major policy, arguably the most significant domestic policy uh, of the post-war period, policy decision, of the post-war period, being defended by its champions on the grounds that everybody just needed to believe more that it was a good idea and would go well. I'm trying to mark these um, milestones at the moment. I'm trying to uh, spot the, the, the marks in the road, if you like, that, that were most significant. And it's almost impossible to do because they crowd in upon you so quickly and so completely. But the... Um, but that moment there, I, I couldn't put a date on it. Could you put a date on it? Not the first time somebody said believe more, but when it essentially became government policy. I think it was when Theresa May was still in Downing Street. It became government policy, essentially, to tell the population that the single most important post-war policy decision ever implemented upon the United Kingdom was only going to go well if everyone believed more that it would go well. It was the sort of... Uh, it was, the, it was the ruby slippers moment of British politics, wasn't it? If we just tap our heels together and say there's no idea like Brexit, there's no idea like Brexit, there's no idea like Brexit, then suddenly success would follow and it would all happen. And that's when I realised that the arguments weren't going to work. I think subconsciously I clocked that there's no real point telling people that we're going to be a third country, that we are going to be treated like a third country, that there's no prospect of the German car industry galloping to our rescue. Because if you, and I'm talking to you now as someone who still somehow listens to this program, despite me having driven you to the edge of distraction with my explanation of how wrong you got it in 2016, because you know I still love you, the, 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 that kind of position that you found yourself in for reasons I still don't fully understand, although I've got a fairly good grasp of them. You were still so desperate to support it, to believe it, that whenever you were told stuff that you didn't like, you managed somehow to put your fingers in your ears and sort of go, and close your eyes and just sort of go, la, 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 la. You know that thing that you can do if you're hearing stuff? that you don't want to hear, la, 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 that. I, I've seen grown men do that in my presence. It would be indiscreet of me to mention names, but one or two of them you are uh, familiar with on an almost daily basis. But when presented with incontrovertible evidence that this was a bloody stupid idea, they would go either actually or metaphorically, la, 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 la. I'm on the radio, so I don't know why I'm actually acting that out in full with closed eyes and fingers in, well, one ear, because I've got a headphone o o over the other, and sing, but, but I am. And that's when I, that's when I, uh, that's when I did it. I, I, I mean, that's when I thought, I can't do this. I can't win this battle. I'm not going to stop fighting, but you're going to have to see it. I, I said to you, people are going to have to actually feel the consequences before they can appreciate the reality. That, that idea, John Redwood this weekend is a good example. Um, Colin reminds us his solution was that everyone should go on holiday in England. I think it's 83 beaches at the moment that you're advised not to go near because of the amount of human waste that is being pumped into the rivers by the privatised water companies. Um, I, 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 John Redwood, someone who was treated as a sage, one of the intelligent Brexiters, you'll remember. It, it beggars belief, doesn't it? So we're in this situation now where... Only really Suella Braverman is arguing that this has nothing to do with Brexit. So Suella Braverman 
having an interesting weekend. Uh, she may, in fact, uh, provide us with most of the material for today's programme, although I'm conscious that, that that might involve eating the roast potatoes before we get on to the rest of our Sunday lunch, because she's going to be influencing the news, shall we say, for the rest of the week. But, but uh, Suella Braverman, clo- close to the only person who is attempting to argue that this has nothing to do with Brexit. I'll let you hear from her first, and then I will explain to you why she is, once again, categorically wrong. I don't know if today is the day for asking you whether she is stupid or dishonest or both. Um, Not least because I'd also like to ask that question with regards to the fact that 12 refugees in Rwanda were shot dead by the authorities for protesting about the state of their food in 2018, something which Yvette Cooper shared with the House of Commons only last year, but about which Suella Braverman claims to be completely ignorant. So I I don't know. I don't want to use up the is she stupid or lying or both question on the Dover scenario when it may play better to the Rwanda scenario. But here she is yesterday. I don't think that's fair to say this has been, uh, you know, an adverse effect of Brexit. I think we've seen, we've had many years now uh, since leaving the European Union and there's been, on the whole, very good uh, operations and processes so he's wrong at then, you think, the, the CEO border. The but what I would say is at acute times when there's a lot of pressure uh, crossing the channel, whether that's uh, uh, on the, uh, the tunnel or on ferries, then I think that there's always going to be a backup. And I just urge everybody to be a bit patient while the ferry companies work their way through the backlog. Um, I mean, she's obviously wrong, but I actually listening to that began to question the wisdom of not doing the is she lying or stupid or both question because she does sound like she means it doesn't she she sounds like she doesn't understand when new checks were introduced she does sound as if she genuinely doesn't understand why new checks were introduced i mean it doesn't matter it's not as if she's home secretary or anything but let let me remind you what the chief executive of the port of dover had to say this weekend on exactly the same subject. And then then you need to ask yourself whether or not you believe Billy Buncher numbers with a bulldog avatar on Twitter telling you that it's all to do with the French trying to get revenge for some unspecified insult, possibly the Battle of Waterloo, I'm not sure, or whether you would trust the... I mean, that's a Brexit moment, isn't it? So there's a massive problems in Dover, right? Whose explanation for those massive problems are you going to believe? Billy Buncher numbers on Twitter, or the chief executive of the port of Dover, a bloke called Doug Bannister. And I asked that question with quite a heavy heart, because I could perhaps just glance at my inbox, and although these people perhaps don't ring me as often as they used to do, there will be people saying that Suella Braverman and Billy Buncher numbers, they've got their heads around this problem, they know exactly what's going on, and it's got nothing to do with Brexit. And we should all completely ignore the chief executive of the port of Dover on the issue of what is actually happening in the port of Dover. The difference of of being in a post-Brexit environment means that every passport needs to be checked before uh, a vehicle or a passenger can cross into uh, into the European Union through France. And that happens here in Dover. So it does make processing more challenging. 